Hi Booktube, Lynette here and in today's video I'm going to do a book tag for you and I'm going to do the musicals book tag. I haven't been able to find out who the original creator is for this tag so unfortunately I haven't been able to link them down below um, but there's lots of people that have done it out there so go and check it out after you've watched this one if you want to see other people's answers to the questions. I have listed all of the questions down below in the um, information section so if you feel like doing it yourself then please go ahead and have a go i tag you all the first question is wicked what is your favorite fictional friendship and i have to say it is frodo and sam from the lord of the rings i absolutely love their friendship they are absolutely 100 percent devoted to each other which gets shown on multiple occasions throughout the the whole trilogy um even right to the very end of the the story of especially a Frodo story and I absolutely loved it Sam is such a sweetheart and he clearly clearly is devoted to Frodo um Frodo is a bit more pragmatic uh, a bit more practical than than Sam about these things but yes right to the very end especially the last uh, the last book um you do see Frodo is very much reliant on Sam and he he really appreciates the friendship that he has with him Question two is Sweeney Todd, who is your favourite villain? And for me, and this is probably going to be controversial, but for me, it's always going to be Severus Snape. He is a villain. He's also a hero. Uh, and I absolutely love him. Um, I can't really say anything else than that. Um, he has his reasons for the way he is. He has his reasons for the way he behaves. They're all there in the book, so if you've read them, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't and you pick up the Harry Potter series, then obviously you'll you'll find out for yourself. Um, but yes, it, it is 100% Severus Snape from the Harry Potter series. Question number three is uh, the Phantom of the Opera, your favourite love triangle. And I have to say that for me, it is Claire, Fraser, Jamie and Frank Randall uh, from the Outlander series. I've more watched the TV series than I have read the book. I've uh, I finished the first book in the series and I did start Dragonfly and Amber, the second book, but I got really stuck. And to be honest, the only reason I got through Outlander is because I'd seen the, the actual TV series and it, it followed the same path. Um, and Dragonfly and Amber was going the same way. So uh, it is one I intend to go back to, but um, back to the love triangle. Um, obviously it centers around Claire, who in the early uh, 1940s is transported back in time to the mid 1700s, early 1700s. And in the 1940s, she's married to a man called Frank Randall. And in the mid 1700s, she meets a man called Jamie Fraser. Uh, she is in love with both men um, in the future and in the past. Uh, I think it's safe to say that Frank is not her soulmate um, and that I think she knows it even at the start of the book. I think she knows he's the man she's going to be married to um, for that part of her life um, but I don't think she actually knows the true meaning of soulmates until she's transported back in time and meets Jamie and theirs is just an epic love story which spans time um, and across continents and it, it's just I don't know how else to describe it as an epic love story, really. Uh, there's lots of epic fantasy out there. So, yes, this is an epic love story. Um, I think there are seven or eight books in the series at the moment. And I think some of the later books maybe do follow um, younger generations of the family, as well as Claire and Jamie. But, yes, they do have this huge love story which spans uh, Europe and America. Question number four is The Lion King. Who is your favourite sidekick? For me, it's Lassiter from The Black Dagger Brotherhood, written by J.R. Ward. Uh, the Black Dagger Brotherhood is a rather large series of romance novels, um, all about uh, vampires who are living in the real world. Um, they're not exactly hiding in plain sight. They aren't the vampires that maybe you'd know if you'd read the Twilight series. Um, they can't come out in daylight. They are restricted. They do. They do have those restrictions. They do have to feed on blood, although they can't feed on human blood. 
Uh, they have to feed on each other's blood, their own species. Um, but Lassiter is actually an angel um, who comes into it a bit later on in the series, but he is just so funny. He takes the Michael out of so many of the uh, the vampires that are in the Brotherhood um, and he quite clearly needs a love story of his own. I don't know if we've got one yet. Um, I've got a bit stuck on the series, so I need to move forward a bit in the series and find out if he does actually get his own happy ever after because he deserves it. Um, but he just provides, in some of the heavier sides of the these books, he does provide some real excellent lighter moments that just give you a smile and 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 stop you from feeling quite so down about how the the, the series is going um especially as it does get quite heavy in the the later books question number five is Greece and your least favorite book ending and for me this is book one in a romance trilogy called the driven series by Kay Bromberg and I very very rarely ever come close to feeling like throwing my books or my kindle um, but the end of this particular book made me want to break my kindle in half it's a uh, very much a cliffhanger so if you want to explore um, romance novels I, I do recommend Kay Bromberg she's excellent I absolutely love everything she writes but um, be prepared if you f decide to start with Driven which was her first ever release um, you will need to pick up Fueled straight away and then once you pick up Fueled you'll need to pick up Crashed as well um, she's very good at a cliffhanger and definitely Driven the first time I read Driven I read it not long after it was released um, Fueled was nowhere on site and I wasn't really part of the the social media scene so then I had no idea if there was going to be a sequel or when it was coming out um, so I was absolutely gutted and I, I literally almost threw my Kindle across the room um, because it was just so frustrating that there was this couple um, who have this awesome chemistry together and obviously belong together and she ends the book like that you just you can't do that to people you just can't do it without having the next book all ready to go or at least telling us when you're going to get it um so yes i reread it a couple of years later um at that point fueled and crashed had been released again i got to the end of driven and i was like oh for, why have you done this to us but thankfully i could move straight on to fueled i found fueled moved straight onto it at the end of fueled she did the same thing again she left us with this huge cliffhanger where do they go from here what happens how do they how does it move forward um but obviously with crashed everything comes together and it all works out well in the end and they do end up together which is where they should be um they have lots of bumps on the road but yes uh Kay Brongenberg is my favorite romance author except for when she does cliffhangers question six Matilda what is your favorite book to movie adaptation easy if you know me um then you'll know this but it is the lord of the rings films not the hobbit films i don't like the hobbit films but it is most definitely the lord of the ring films um i love lord of the rings i love the story i love the films um in fact over uh, christmas and new year i had to self isolate um for a few days because i'd come into contact with someone who had tested positive for covid and one of those days I sat and binge watched the entire Lord of the Rings films and I mean the extended version so I mean over four hours for every film. Um, I think they have been done so well it's quite clearly been done by someone who loves the stories um, and and wanted to get the best out of his filmmaking skills at that point in time um, and I just think they hold up really really well and I can watch them over and over and over again. And the final question, question seven, Les Miserables, what is your favourite death in a book? I wouldn't say any deaths are my favourite, but I think the one that I enjoy the best, the way it's done, is Boromir um, in The Lord of the Rings, in The Fellowship of the Ring, because, and that's because he redeems himself. Um, he has a hard time during The Fellowship of the Ring and he suffers a lot and the place that he's coming from it does cause him some disquiet um it does cause him some conflict personal conflict as well as 
well, not quite professional, but um, and in terms of his life uh, conflict. Uh, but by the end of it and by the time he passes, he actually redeems himself and he turns all of that around. And uh, the manner in which he dies is very, very fitting. And I think in both the book and the film, I think it was done very, very well. And it's not it's not one I enjoy seeing, reading, um, but it is one that I think has been done of all the deaths. It's the one that stands out for me the most, um, other than maybe a couple in the, the Harry Potter films. So that was my answers to the musical theatre tag. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and also check out other videos on my channel. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Bye.